hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i would like to address a comment that one of you left on my instagram page whereby she complained bitterly about you know using the sunscreens that we recommend we skin influencers recommend not that i'm i'm a skin influencer yet anyway sunscreen that we skin influencers have recommended and did not work for her because she still keeps turning now before i jump into the points that i have listed here i'd like to clarify two things number one sunscreens do not prevent you from tanning because they are not 100 percent foolproof depending on what level of sunscreen you get there will always be a tiny amount of sun rays hitting your skin directly and you know trying to like excite your melanocytes which is why we always advise people to always practice you know avoiding the sun wearing you know like huge hats to like you know block out the sun wearing uv protection clothing and and all of that umbrellas and what have you no sunscreen is going to prevent you 100 percent from tanning what the sunscreen will do is to reduce the likelihood of you developing a visible tan and that brings me to the second point when i review sunscreens on this channel and i say this sunscreen did not make me tan what i'm referring to is incidental sun exposure the sun exposure you will get if you leave your house and go across the street to mama kechi's store to buy pepper or bread that five minutes you spend from your house to her house and back to your house again that is incidental sun exposure the 10 minutes that you do from your workplace home or from home to your workplace that is incidental sun exposure you being in a room with the windows open but you are not directly facing that window that is incidental sun exposure in essence my incidental sun exposure my accumulated sun exposure for most days is like less than one hour max two hours and on those days when it's going to be the two hours i tend to reapply my sunscreen so when i say a sunscreen did not make me tan i am referring to incidental sun exposure i am not referring to you going to go and lie down in the beach as in bare your skin lie down in the beach and have like a whole day at the beach no i don't spend time out in the sun my sunscreen reviews are for people who do incidental sun exposure if you do prolonged sun exposure my sunscreen reviews are not for you please do not be guided by them with that said let's get right into the video number one you are using the right sunscreen for the wrong situation most of us tend to gravitate towards you know those asian sunscreens because they are lightweight they don't leave like a greasy finish and all of that which you know people tend to like because for some reason we are just afraid of having greasy looking skin me i don't mind i've hit 40 i need that grease to cover all the fine lines on my face so um people just tend to kind of gravitate towards those sunscreens because they are lightweight and everything but the problem here is that quite a number of those sunscreens are not built for prolonged outdoor sun exposure so you might be wearing those sunscreens thinking you are protected outdoors but you are really not protected so what i would advise you to do if you insist on using an asian sunscreen for prolonged outdoor activities i would advise you to check out blogs like um radzilla cosme i will leave a link to her blog down in the description box below check out her blog where she like categorizes sunscreens by you know whether they are for incidental sun exposure or they are for prolonged outdoor exposure sporting activities and what have you so that you will guide yourself now for those who do not have time to go through that list on that list the only sunscreen that i have reviewed here that appears on that list for prolonged sun exposure are the so uh the Kose sun cut uv perfect gel and the Kose sun cut uv perfect essence they are the only two sunscreens that i have reviewed on this channel that appear on that list so if you insist on using those kind of sunscreens for prolonged sun exposure make sure you are using like the Kose sun cut uv perfect gel now the misha aqua sun gel um their unofficial brand ambassador i can't remember her name is it jude something she claims that she also uses that sunscreen for prolonged sun exposure for days at the beach and she does not tan but then again she is very very religious when it comes to reapplying the sunscreen so like i said do not use the right sunscreen in the wrong situation some sunscreens are not built for prolonged outdoor exposure personally when i'm going to spend a lot of time outdoors in the sun I either use my Kose Sun Cut UV Perfect Gel or my Bondi Sands, one of the two. They are the only two like sunscreen that I trust for like prolonged sun exposure right now in my routine. 
moving on you are not applying enough sunscreen or you are not reapplying enough sunscreen i don't understand what influencers and some dermatologists they are doing when they like dispense sunscreen on their fingers and then proceed to do a large swipe here a large swipe here and then pump a dot here and i'm like what offense did your forehead commit that you just put one drop of sunscreen on your forehead and then smoothed it out like seriously what is that forehead doing to you what is the beef if you are going to apply sunscreen to your face make sure you cover every inch of skin adequately and evenly what personally i do is i tend to apply like you know generally they, they ask you to apply like 1.25 mils of sunscreen to your face and 1.5 mils to your neck and to your ears personally i do like six mils of sunscreen minimum first application six mils of sunscreen from here up above that is what i do and, and I, I tend to like i kind of like apply them in like the first layer is a huge coat when i'm done with that i then go over my forehead and the sides of my face with extra sunscreen because those are areas like uh those are my problematic areas and i tend to turn very 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 easily across the forehead and the side of my face and that is what i do so probably you are not applying enough sunscreen and you need to start applying enough sunscreen to your skin like i said previously in the other video if you're going to spend time a lot of time outdoors you need to reapply your sunscreen and you need to reapply it effectively well most people tend to gravitate towards you know like sunscreen sprays but in my personal opinion I don't really like sunscreen sprays i don't think they give you like an even coverage it's just what it is because even most of these brands if you flip the canister they will tell you spray it in your heart and then apply it to your face so it's like why bother having a sunscreen spray if you still need to like spray it in your palms before applying to your face it makes no fucking sense so like i said apply enough sunscreen and make sure you are applying enough sunscreen if you have the money you're a big girl or a big boy slather that sunscreen don't be doing that whole 1.25 years 1.5 years no slather that sunscreen until you feel you have like enough coat of sunscreen on your face still on this issue when you are applying sunscreen make sure you are not in a hot environment while applying the sunscreen especially if you tend to sweat a lot like i do personally what i do i apply sunscreens directly in front of the fan or in front of an ac as in cold as in, in a chilled environment why i do this is so that the sunscreen has enough time to set on my skin before i proceed out i tend to apply my sunscreens and i wait a minimum of 30 minutes for it to set into my skin before i start my daily activities minimum 30 minutes before i start my daily activities that is what i do most brands will tell you to wait like 15 to 20 minutes but personally i just wait 30 minutes to allow the sunscreen to set on my face so if you are applying sunscreen in a hot environment and you tend to sweat a lot <laughs> to be honest you might be wasting your time because as you are applying that sunscreen the sweat is coming out and pushing the sunscreen off it is not allowing the sunscreen to form an even layer on your skin so as much as possible if, if you can get one of those battery powered fans use it while applying your sunscreen wait like 15 to 30 minutes before you proceed to do other things okay and this takes me into the third point that i have to address applying makeup over sunscreen is always always going to mess with the level of protection that sunscreen is going to give you and that is why i always advise people who wear makeup to go for spf 50 plus and above this motion of using your what's it called pancake yeah it would compact powder this motion of using your compact powder or using your makeup brush to buff you know the makeup and everything tends to lift off sunscreen from your skin thereby reducing the protection that you get so it is always best to use a high spf sunscreen if you are going to be wearing makeup spf 50 plus and above by the time you are done ap applying your makeup at least probably maybe you come down from an spf 50 plus to an spf 30 thereabouts you get what i'm saying but at least it gives you enough protection two so, like i said in the previous point most people have seen on youtube they ask you to wait like five minutes before you start applying makeup my dear sit in front of a fan let the fan be really blowing your face wait 30 minutes let that sunscreen set really well you are sure that sunscreen has set into the skin before you start applying your makeup that is my own tip for you if you feel your sunscreen is not working and you wear makeup wait 30 minutes before you start layering that makeup onto your face another thing you need to look at is whether 
your sunscreen has number one expired or you bought fake sunscreen from a useless vendor fake sunscreen in the sense that <laughs> there seems to be quite a lot of imitation of this popular sunscreen that we use so you really need to be careful of where you are sourcing your sunscreens from so if let's say okay you are used to using like the Bior uv aqua watch rear sense and you don't tan while using the sunscreen and all of a sudden you notice that you are tanning and you have not changed anything in your routine but probably you have changed vendors of that sunscreen because you are looking for cheap a cheaper source of the sunscreen there's a possibility that probably you got a fake sunscreen at the same time so there's another probability that the, that sunscreen you have has expired which is an issue that i tend to have with these asian brands they do not put the expiry date of their sunscreens on the packaging and i don't know why and when you contact them to take the expiry date they just they are always very very cagey about it so using asian sunscreen doesn't really give you that full on peace of mind because you do not know when that sunscreen is going to expire so either you got fake sunscreen or you got an expired sunscreen for american sunscreens and european sunscreens it's quite easy to know like the expiry date because most times they come like printed on the bottle or they have like a batch code on the bottle which you can run through sites like checkfresh.com to see you know when that batch of sunscreen was produced and in most cases when i've contacted european brands asking them for the expiry date of their sunscreen they always tell me the expiry date so you could also do that but with, but with asian sunscreens the one that i've bought i think i've bought beyond before and I think I bought Kose and they were quite cagey about the expiry date of the sunscreen. They kept asking me, where did you buy it? And it was just a whole lot of drama. And I was like, you know what? I'm not often, I'm not down with this. Now, still on this issue of fake sunscreens, especially here in Nigeria, quite a number of Nigerian brands are now coming out with their own sunscreens. And I'm like, okay. But I need you to understand one thing. AliExpress has like a shitload of fake, fake ass sunscreens. And what some Nigerian vendors do is like they go to AliExpress, they see a sunscreen that is cheap as fuck that they like, and they basically tell the vendor, like, you know what, I want this sunscreen in wholesale, but I want it to come in my own packaging. So basically, they print out their own packaging, repackage that was it called that AliExpress sunscreen, and then they ship it down to Nigeria and they start selling to you. They have launched sunscreen. This is another reason why I, 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 I don't see myself ever using another Nigerian brand sunscreen ever again like for me to use a nigerian brand of sunscreen hmm, you have to show me that certificate that you got from an international lab where they tested that sunscreen to ensure that it meets the spf and pa rating on the bottle like i can't deal i need to see the receipts show me the receipts where did you test that sunscreen because cm um, the issue here is that sunscreens are quite expensive to formulate like really 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 expensive to formulate i can't remember which brand that thing is, is it is an, is an, i can't remember which brand as in, on their faq page a big brand though people were asking as in how far when are you going to use a sunscreen and they exp and they exp and they exp hey jesus english and they explicitly said that they do not have plans of releasing a sunscreen because sunscreens are a lot of hard work so you can imagine a big international brand saying that they have no plans of investing in sunscreen because there are a lot of hard work and one chewing gum Nigerian brand is bringing out sunscreen. And then it makes you ask, how are they able to like afford to bring out a sunscreen? Now, what most brands do, they tend to do what they call private labeling. Basically, you go to like a big lab that has like several formulations of sunscreen. You tell them, okay, look at the formula. You, you see what you like and you tell them you know what i like that sunscreen i want it for myself really so they kind of like they manufacture in bulk for you put you put it in your own packaging and you release to the market everybody does this even the likes of kali jenna and most celebrities that is what they do now the problem here is that for sunscreen you need to retest that sunscreen before you go to the market this is the issue that what's it called purito they had they went to one of these big companies they bought formula and trusted what the company was telling them was the SPF written on the bot on the you know on the package or whatever and they pushed it to the market without doing their own testing of the sunscreen so how many nigerian brands we go buy private label sunscreen and then sit down to actually retest those sunscreen to make sure that those sunscreens actually meet the SPF labeling on the package how many nigerian brands sunscreen testing can cost you from ten thousand dollars upwards from what i've researched ten thousand dollars upwards to test a sunscreen to make sure that it meets the spf on the label and from what i understand 
if you fail the sunscreen test, you have to repeat that test again. Ten thousand dollars. Current exchange rate is like six hundred naira thereabouts. Do the calculation. That like six million naira, right? Yeah. Yes, six million naira to test sunscreen. You've not shipped though. You've not done package. You know. You've not even ordered the one that you want to sell to your customers. Six million naira to test that sunscreen. And if that test fails, you have to repeat that test again. Another six million naira. You spend twelve million naira testing sunscreen to make sure that it meets the SPF on the label. When you are through with the whole testing, it meets your SPF fifty PA plus 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 plus. Now you want to kind of like um order let's say like 100 copies or 200 copies of that sunscreen probably let's say you are doing 10 they are selling they are selling it to you at 10 dollars per per tube and you are buying 200 so that's like two thousand dollars right multiply by 600 that's another 1.2 million naira i think i hope my math is not wrong shall i get what i'm saying another 1.2 million naira you are going to pay to get the sunscreen out of the store then you have to now pay shipping to nigeria pay custom fees pay import duties before you now sit down to now organize yourself on how much you want to sell that sunscreen to your target customer eventually the way this whole thing is going to go you might end up selling that sunscreen let's say like a hundred mil of sunscreen for like fifteen thousand naira or twenty thousand naira based on how much you have invested in testing that sunscreen and making sure that it meets the spf rating twenty thousand naira for a bottle of hundred mil sunscreen you're not coming to a market whereby you have to sit down and now compete with Asian brands and European brands that are retailing for like maybe 5,000 naira for 100 mils of sunscreen. That's the altruist there about. Maybe like 7,000 naira for 100 mils of sunscreen. That's the closest of course. Do you get what I'm saying? As in, your competition is selling at a lesser price and you are coming in with your own sunscreen for, for 20,000 naira because you need to recoup all the money that you have invested. You bring the sunscreen, you put the sunscreens on your shelf. The sunscreens will sit down there for many months. You do not sell, sell off the sunscreen. You start engaging in scare, scare marketing tactics that, oh my God, like say, let's say what you imported is physical sunscreens. And then you now start doing fear marketing tactics as in like chemical sunscreens that are bad for you. They cause cancer like this Nigerian brand is doing. It is where we should be from. They cause cancer. They are not good for you. They don't fix hyperpigmentation. The same brand as you can see on the screen. As in, enough not as a Nigerian brand between a, a lot of rubbish. So you basically you engage in scare marketing tactics to try and move the units off your shelf. Eventually, those sunscreens might sit on your shelf. You won't really sell them. Three years have passed and they have expired. What do you do? You now begin to wipe off expiry dates of the products so as to move that product off the shelf. So literally, you are selling expired sunscreen to the community using your know-how and everything hi god see these brands will fucking lie to you if you allow them to this is the reason why i say in this skincare one person tell you say now so it be do a second research get a second opinion from someone else because some of these brands if you sit down and don't do your research they will take you for your phone So this is basically why I always stick to European sunscreens or Asian sunscreens and of recent maybe American sunscreens like established brands that know what the fuck they are doing when it comes to sunscreen brands. Me and Nigerian sunscreen brands, it's never going to happen. Like even this one self that came by Zaron release, they put SPF 50 plus 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 and I'm like, hello, what does SPF 50 plus 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 mean? Is that like a new like criteria for brand for rating sunscreens because this shit doesn't make any sense. There is no such thing as SPF 50 plus 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 plus. It makes no fucking sense. When you are buying a sunscreen that is dedicated to treating hyperpigmentation, I always advise people to make sure that that sunscreen has a PA plus 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 rating or a UVA circle logo or a high UVA protection factor or at least a three boot star rating. UVA protection matters a lot if you're trying to treat hyperpigmentation because UVA rays are the first things that will make your skin to develop a tan. This is the reason why in tanning beds, what they use are UVA rays. UVA will make your, it will immediately, on sun exposure, it will immediately oxidize the small melanin that you have existing before it even triggers formation of, um, of extra melanin. UVA protection is very, very important. So if you're going to treat hyperpigmentation, make sure that your sunscreen has a very, very high UVA rating. 
American sunscreens sadly do not come with like specified UVA rating on the bottle. They just tell you that it is broad spectrum. Broad spectrum means that it protects against UVA and UVB rays, but it doesn't actually tell you as how much UVA protection are you getting from the sunscreen. So it's kind of like mm, any high, any high, So if you need to treat hyperpigmentation, get a sunscreen that has PA++++ label on the bottle, a UVA in a circle logo, or a boot star rating, or a UVA protection factor rating. I think that UVA protection factor rating, I think the likes of um, Altruist has it on their website. I think La Roche Posay, that they are invisible getting one. I don't know what sunscreen is. I think they have it there. Now, still on this whole UVA rating issue, just because a sunscreen has a high UVA rating on the packaging does not mean that sunscreen is going to provide you with a high UVA protection no? because you also have to factor in bad batch of sunscreen like the bad experience that I had with this sunscreen from Malibu it, had, it has a high UVA rating but I tanned like a motherfucker while using that sunscreen as a serious tan, I tanned, no be small tanning the final tip that I have here is that you should avoid using actives during the daytime Personally, I don't think there's any research on this, but I think this is something that I learned from Dr. V. Do not use actives. If you're a dark skin person who experiences hyper hyperpigmentation, severe hyper hyperpigmentation, do not use actives during the daytime. Leave your actives for nighttime. Even vitamin C, L ascorbic acid, leave it for nighttime. Personally, I don't use actives during the daytime. I simply use my moisturizer, which contains niacinamide and L acetyl glucosamine, and I'm good to go. Over that, I apply my sunscreen and that's it. I've stopped resveratrol for now. I'm going to like introduce it later to see whether it's compatible during the daytime or not. But basically, you get the idea of what I'm saying. No glycolic acid, no lactic acid, no salicylic acid, no kojic acid, no like potentially irritating actives during the daytime. Essential oils as well to l ascorbic acid. I just don't do all of that during the daytime. Because the issue here is that when you use those active during the daytime, your sunscreen reapplication game needs to be on point. It exposes you a lot to the sun. Number two, you don't know how those sunscreen actives are going to react with the sun, causing a reaction that will even like intensify the whole hyperpigmentation. So basically just leave actives out of your routine during the daytime. Focus your actives in the evening time when the sun has gone down. And I think in a nutshell, that is basically what I have to share with you guys. These are things that I'm doing right now in my skincare routine. Gosh, I'm sweating. Hey! If I don't take lights. Hey, Jesus, I'm sweating. This place is hot. So let's round this up. So I think basically in a nutshell, this is my tips on why possibly your sunscreen is not working. So in a summary, what I would say is that get a good sunscreen that will protect you either for incidental sun exposure or for prolonged sun exposure make sure that it is a good branded sunscreen and um you know make sure you are reapplying as if as much as possible do not use active during the daytime and you know everything that we talked about so don't forget to please like share subscribe if you found this video helpful and i will see you guys in my next video take care guys bye